What is geopolitics? Bowman says it's a pseudoscience. Brooks says it's a pseudoscience. Freeman says it's pseudoscientific. Morgenthau says it's a pseudoscience. Have I made the point clearly enough? Geopolitics is a pseudoscience. Stop using the word. Stop it now. Right. Learning outcomes. First, to explain that geopolitics is a pseudoscience. Second, to see where it comes from. Third, to see how a more critical version of geopolitics has emerged, first in Japan, next in France, and finally in the Anglosphere. Our starting point is this chap, Friedrich Ratzel. Ratzel gave us two great works, Anthropogeography and Politische Geography. Ratzel originally thought that his Anthropogeography couldn't be translated from German into English, as the English mind was wired so differently to the German that it just wouldn't make sense. This should give you some insight into Ratzel's mind. But eventually, Ratzel relented and gave the task of translating his great work to one of his students, an American called Ellen Churchill Semple. This translation was a task that she never really finished. She translated most of it, and augmented bits of it with her own anthropological fieldwork in the Appalachian Mountains. But she deliberately removed one key bit of Ratzel's work, a bit that she found to be a distraction, and something that the rest of the book didn't need. I'll come back to that key bit in a moment. Another of Ratzel's students, this time from Sweden, took the exact opposite view to Semple. Rudolf Kjellen felt that this bit that Semple had missed out was actually the most important bit of Ratzel's work, and even coined a term for it. The key thing that Semple disagreed with, and Kjellen thought was most important, was simple. Ratzel argued that the state was an organism. Kjellen took Ratzel's idea that the state was an organism, and from it developed the theory which he called geopolitics. Now, you'll remember in the last session, I presented the idea of the state as a person. I showed how this idea becomes explicit in the Montevideo Convention, and how the constructivists see this as problematic. To point to the absurdity of this view, I presented the state as Lego people. For some constructivists, states do not exist independently, they are socially constructed. Whether you agree with that or not, we can fairly safely say that states are not people, they are not persons. As soon as you start referring to a state as a person, you start expecting them to behave in the way that people do, even though they're not. Well, the same is true if we regard the state as an organism. If we regard the state as an organism, then we expect it to behave as an organism, doing the things that organisms do. So. Is the state an organism? What are the things that organisms do? Well, a long time ago when I did biology at school, I was taught that living organisms have seven characteristics. They reproduce, feed, respire, grow, excrete, move, and are sensitive. Do states reproduce? Perhaps. Some of the former colonial powers exported their forms of governance to some of their colonies. That could be regarded as a form of reproduction. Do states feed? Well, they certainly use a lot of resources, and those resources do not always come from within their own boundaries. Do they respire? Well, they don't literally breathe, but they do emit a lot of carbon. Do they grow? Well, at various points in history, some states have grown by taking on more territory. But if that territory was previously part of another state, then for one state to grow, another has to get smaller. Do states excrete? States do produce a lot of waste, and many states choose to send that waste to the other side of the planet. Do they move? Well, here's one state as an organism. Poland before 1939, and here's Poland after 1945. Poland has certainly moved. It's moved west. Are states sensitive? Well, 
every theory of world politics we've looked at so far has accepted that states have some form of awareness of the international system and the states around them. What they do with that information is another matter, but they are at least aware. So for the seven characteristics of living organisms, we have seven potential yeses. If you wanted to, and you took all seven with a pinch of salt, you could argue that the state is an organism, in the same way that if you were a constructivist and you wanted to, you could argue that the state doesn't exist at all. Choosing either of these reveals your political biases, 